Today I want to talk to you about the future of wedding films and where I think that wedding videography is headed. This is really important to keep in mind too because I want you to be aware of how wedding films are growing and changing. The last thing that I want for you is for you to turn into a meme of an old wedding videographer yelling things like, filming weddings on tape is good enough. You laugh, but I have met wedding videographers over the years that still say things like, these tiny DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are a fad. We're going back to shoulder-mounted rigs soon. And I don't know if we necessarily are, so I don't want to see you turn into that. So in this video, I want to paint a picture of the future and talk about three ways that the wedding videography industry is changing and how we can expect it to look different moving into the future. Before we get started though, because I want to help you out even more, I've put together a free guide to help you book more wedding film clients. You can download it for free at the link down in the video description and I would love for you to check it out. Talking about the future now, one of the biggest changes that I think that we're gonna see as wedding videographers is the shift of wedding videographers filming weddings on their cell phones and this being completely acceptable. And I realize that you may be preparing to angrily comment things like, cell phones are not professional enough, the image quality isn't there yet, you're crazy, Matt. And that's fine, you can say that. But at the same time, as a rebuttal to you, I want you to know that this is already happening. Regardless of whether you think that it is okay or acceptable or not, there are filmmakers out there that are already doing this. For example, there's an extremely talented wedding videographer who appropriately goes by the name A Girl and Her Phone, and as the name implies, she films weddings completely with an iPhone. Of course, she has it rigged out with a stabilizer and filters and microphones, etc. But the factor remains that she is still filming weddings with an iPhone, and they look really good. Her compositions are great, the shots are smooth and stable, and it works. And above all, even more important than that, she's happy filming with her iPhone, and her couples are happy with the work that she's making for them. And that's what's most important. I'll link to her work down in the description too if you want to see more of it. Talking more about the future of filming weddings with phones though, we do need to take a second to talk specifically about the iPhone. Because when Apple released the 15 Pro and Pro Max, that was, in a word, revolutionary for cell phone video. See, Apple didn't just release new phones, they also released a new picture profile called Apple Log, and what makes Apple Log so special is that for the first time ever, Apple is dialing back a lot of the post-processing and sharpening that it does to video footage that you film on an iPhone. Here's the deal. With all previous iPhones, Apple heavily oversharpened the image to within about an inch of its life. And while this footage still looks decent, my theory for why they overprocess things so much is that above all, they want this footage to look best on the tiny iPhone screen. And to do that, they know that oversharpening will help the footage look its best and help the iPhone compete with something like Samsung's flagship phones. Basically, Apple did not want a potential buyer of the iPhone to be holding an iPhone next to a Samsung and have the iPhone footage not look as sharp and crispy on its six inch display next to a Samsung, so they heavily over sharpened the footage. The problem is that this heavily over sharpened footage only looks good on the phone screen, and once you copy it to a computer and view it on a larger screen or a TV, etc., this footage falls apart very quickly because it has such an extreme level of sharpness. But like I said though, with Apple Log, all of this sharpness has been removed and you're left with an image that looks significantly more like something that you would record using a larger mirrorless camera, not a cell phone. And then if you pair this higher quality, less sharpened footage with a free app like the Blackmagic Camera app that can enable you to film in Apple Log and not only in ProRes, but in a much more compressed codec like H.265 that will still look great with a small file size, filming a wedding with an iPhone becomes dramatically more feasible for many people. And honestly, confession time here in case you haven't seen it, as the ultimate proof of concept, I recently filmed a wedding with an iPhone and it actually went really well. I used the iPhone 15 Pro Max and I was really impressed by the video quality of the phone and how easy it was to use. If you want to watch the wedding film that I created and the full behind the scenes video, I'll link that up in the corner and down in the video description. I think you will find that 
incredibly interesting to watch. So there you have it. The first way that I see wedding films changing in the future is that we are gonna see a lot more filmmakers filming them with cell phones. And to be clear, it may not be the entire wedding film, but it may be parts of it. There have been many times that I've been filming something and I wish that I was filming in a smaller and more discreet way. For example, I oftentimes film the groomsmen hanging out at Top Golf. If you don't know what Top Golf is, it's like a fun way to go hit golf balls and drink and eat while you do it. A lot of groomsmen go and do it in the morning of a wedding day, and I often end up showing up there to film them hanging out. I have been confronted by the management of Top Golf before whenever I brought too big of a camera into film. I had like an FS700 on a glide cam, pretty hefty setup there. And so they were like, hey, what are you doing? Um, they were okay eventually once I explained. But anyways, um, imagine that you're filming at Topgolf or at a museum or at another place where they are never going to allow you to be there with a larger camera, but instead you're just filming a couple on your cell phone while they're there, super discreet. Nobody thinks anything of it, but you are actually recording ultra high quality footage that you can easily mix in with the rest of your wedding footage and no one will know. Pretty cool, huh? Do you see where I'm going with this? Anyways, continuing to talk about the future of wedding filmmaking. This still has to do with cell phones. I'm sorry, okay, we're just continuing in this trend, but don't worry, it's not about iPhones and filming a log or anything like that. Instead, I think that the future of wedding films is vertical. As in a vertical video that you film with a cell phone or that you can get by also turning your camera sideways. Here's the truth. Everybody wants footage in vertical now. Videographers want it so they can promote their business on TikTok and Instagram Reels. Couples want it because they want to be able to share clips of themselves on TikTok and Instagram Reels. And this makes it tough because as professionals, our cameras are really designed to film horizontally and be mounted horizontally. This has led to so many wedding filmmakers that are either starting to film clips vertically or they are filming with their phone alongside their camera while they're filming a wedding. It's crazy. The tough thing is that for a wedding in particular, you only get one shot to film a lot of things. So unless you want to rig up some Frankenstein contraption where you're filming horizontally and vertically at the same time, it can be tough to get the vertical footage that you need. So what do you do? How do you work in the future that we're rapidly moving into that requires you to film horizontally and vertically? Do you just say, forget horizontal and start filming all of your wedding films vertically? No, I wouldn't do that. TVs are still horizontal and I don't really see people mounting their TVs vertically, at least for a while. So I wouldn't worry about that. We're not quite there. Instead, my recommendation to you is to film in at least 4K if you're not already. So upgrade your camera if you're still filming in HD, join us in the world of 4K. And then in addition to that, start composing and framing your shots with vertical in mind. What I mean by that is I still want you to film horizontally, but I always want you to be thinking about how a shot is going to look if you crop it vertically. One way to do this is instead of filming quite so tight on someone, step back a few feet, a bit wider. You can always crop in tighter with your footage with minimal quality loss, but more importantly, by filming a bit wider, this is gonna give you room to crop your footage vertically. This way, if you're filming, say, a couple standing together, if you are too close to them and they're filling the frame, if you crop your footage, it's gonna cut one of them off. But if you're a bit wider, you can get both of them into the frame of a vertical shot, and this could help things look better. If you want to make things even easier on yourself, if you an external monitor when recording, many of these external monitors support different grid lines and patterns, and on some of them you can set it up to have a horizontal and vertical grid line on the same shot. So as you're composing your horizontal wide shot, you can have lines that are going to show you the frame for vertical as well, which can make filming for horizontal and vertical much easier. Eventually, I think that we're going to have tools like this on all of our cameras because camera manufacturers know that filmmakers want to film horizontal and vertical. but considering how slow camera manufacturers often are to implement new things, it may take a while. So yeah, film horizontal, but keep vertical in mind because that's really where things are moving and what so many people want. And remember, above all, as annoying as it may be, it's going to be good for you and your business and marketing, and it's gonna be good for your couples and clients because they're gonna want that vertical footage. Anyways, moving on to the third way now that wedding films are changing and where they are going in the future. I promise you, we're not gonna talk about cell phones or vertical videos for this one because instead of using words like vertical Instagram content, we need to use another big buzzword that is taking the world by storm. No, thankfully it's not crypto or NFTs or something like that, but could you imagine if it was like wedding coin? You have to 
pay for your wedding with wedding coin. And then you pay your vendors in wedding coin. And suddenly all the videographers are multi-millionaires, but only in some obscure internet currency that isn't actually worth anything. That could be fun. No. Thankfully, it's not crypto. We're not talking crypto here. The buzzword that we need to talk about is, of course, AI. Because that is really where so much of the world of filmmaking and video editing is headed, especially whenever it comes to editing. Specifically, we need to talk about two things, generative AI and editing. If you don't know what generative AI is, oftentimes people think about it in terms of image generators, where you type in a text prompt and suddenly an image is created out of nothing. Most notably, Adobe now includes generative AI in Photoshop, where you can select an area in a photo, type in what you want to change it into, and generative AI will simply create that out of nothing in your photo. It's pretty cool, and it's also completely disrupting the world of photography, with a lot of people either really excited about generative AI in photos, or really mad that it's gonna take everybody's jobs. There's no in between. You're either really mad or really excited. That's it. Just how things are going right now. In the world of video, on the other hand, we have not seen generative AI reach quite this level of success yet because video is significantly more complicated and suddenly the computer not only needs to generate an image, but that image needs to be moving in a natural fluid way. So while we're seeing some developments in this area, this still needs some work before you're gonna be able to type in the word wedding film and have a full wedding video created out of nothing with artificially generated people, etc. That'd be really weird. And honestly, that isn't super compelling as a wedding videographer anyways, because it's not like the AI people that you've generated are gonna be paying you to make them an AI wedding video. So while that may be possible someday, it's not like you're gonna be getting paid for it. And keeping in mind that we're talking about the future of wedding videography, the whole reason that I'm bringing up generative AI for video is that it is coming and you need to be aware of it and you need to be prepared for its effect on how you are going to be able to modify and manipulate your footage with it. Aside from being able to generate video from a text prompt, we're already seeing companies like Adobe develop AI tools that you've seen in Photoshop now coming to video. If you have something in your video that you want to remove, be it a person or object, you can select this person or object and your software will then track them and remove them using AI and replace them with something else. Or you can even replace something with something else using AI. The possibilities are super cool and it's gonna make shots that might've been unusable suddenly become usable. And for shots that were missing something, you can then add it back in. It's pretty crazy. Of course, you're also going to have to deal with clients who may expect too much from you and AI. Imagine how often photographers are told they can just Photoshop something out, but you're a videographer and suddenly you're being told, oh, you can just remove that from the video. Use AI to do it. It's kind of scary, but that future is coming. Speaking of futures though, in addition to generative AI, we also need to talk about AI in relation to video editing. A plugin called Autopod took the world by storm earlier this year whenever it showed how it was capable of using AI to make cuts of two different people speaking in a podcast automatically, saving minutes if not hours of tedious work that video editors honestly hated doing. Now as a wedding videographer, imagine having software that will automatically edit a full wedding ceremony video for you with all of the cuts between all the angles, something that may have taken you hours of work can now be done in seconds and you can still charge your couples for it. This is awesome. My point is that I doubt that AI will ever be able to completely replace human emotion that comes from editing a wedding film in a very powerful emotional way, but I can completely see AI taking care of a lot of the boring, busy work edits that we have to do as video editors. Above all, remember that even if AI is janky right now, we're really still in the first few years of it and it is only going to get better as time passes. This is all version 1.0. Imagine how good it's gonna be in five years, 10 years, etc. So there you have it. The future of wedding videography, or at least a little peek into it. We're gonna see more videographers filming weddings with their phones. All of us as wedding videographers need to be filming videos with vertical framing in mind. And AI is coming to disrupt everything. Just be aware of it. Now, all that said, did I miss anything? Do you think that the future of wedding videography is heading in a different direction? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. And while you're down there, check out the link to this video's sponsor, Bride and Groom Video. If you're a wedding filmmaker that is feeling overwhelmed by the amount of edits that you have to finish, I highly recommend checking out Bride and Groom Video because they specialize in editing high quality wedding films with a very fast turnaround time. We're talking 14 days. 
movies. It's awesome. I have personally had them edit a wedding film for me, and I was very impressed by how they were able to replicate my style of work right away, creating a film that looked like something that I would have made, and telling a great story with beautiful visuals and audio in the edit. They have an incredibly easy to use order interface that will keep you updated on the status of your edits as well as when they will be done. And as a huge plus, they edit in Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, and DaVinci Resolve. So regardless of which editor you use, they can work with you. We've got to talk pricing too, because considering the quality of their work, I'm frankly shocked by how affordable they are. Bride and Groom Video will edit you a 60 second teaser for as cheap as 150 bucks or a three minute wedding highlight for only 375. There's even a package where you can get a highlight and a full documentary edit for only 800. And as a special bonus, I've been able to negotiate a deal for you with Bride and Groom Video where if you use the coupon code MATT99 when checking out, you will get $99 off your first edit from them. This is a fantastic deal, so if you have too many edits to finish, or maybe you're just feeling creatively drained as an editor, you have got to reach out to Bride and Groom Video. Outsourcing your edits can revolutionize your business and give you so much time back. I know it has worked so well for me. So check out Bride and Groom Video today at the link down in the video description. Also down there in the description, you'll find a link to my free guide called Edit Videos Like a Pro. This guide is going to walk you through some of the most important things that I've learned as a video editor over the years. It's completely free and you can download it at the link down below. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Also down below, I'll link to my color presets, which look amazing for wedding films, as well as a link to my quick tips guide to book more wedding films. If you're a wedding filmmaker and you've been wanting to book more couples and film more weddings, this guide is going to be extremely helpful to you. It's completely free. Check it out at the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.